I've made several videos in the past in which I create virtual machines in VirtualBox. And typically when I'm creating my virtual hard drive type, I set it to a fixed size because you typically get slightly better performance from a fixed drive type than a dynamic one. However, when you create a fixed hard drive space, it almost seems implied that the amount of space that you allocate to it is well fixed, meaning that you cannot shrink or grow that partition once you have it set up. However, I've recently discovered that it is possible to expand the size of a fixed drive in VirtualBox using a bit of a trick that you can do, and today I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, the first thing that I recommend you do is to back up your virtual machine files because there is a chance that they could become corrupted during these steps and you won't be able to boot the virtual machine anymore. Uh, so you can access that by right-clicking on your virtual machine and then clicking on Show in File Manager. And you basically just want to copy all of these files here to somewhere else or you could just copy the folder that's containing them over to somewhere else. So it's a good idea to do that, especially if it's a virtual machine that takes a lot of time to deploy, like this one that's compiled from source. Next, we'll want to go into the virtual machine settings by highlighting the VM and then clicking on the settings gear at the top. And then we wanna click on the storage tab and from here, we want to go to where it says controller SATA. And if we click on the virtual disk under that section, here we can see all of the details about the virtual drive. So we can see that the type is a VDI. It's a fixed size storage. And you can also see the current size of the disk as well as its location on your physical hard drive the same location that we backed up from earlier. So to begin expanding this, we want to click on the controller that our disk is attached to, and then click on a new storage attachment. So it's this little floppy disk here. And select the type as a hard disk. And then up here, we'll select to create a new one. And this is pretty much the same as when you create the hard disk when you're initially creating your virtual machine. It uh, doesn't matter what type it is. It can be VDI, VHD, et cetera. And same thing here. You can have it set to dynamically allocated or you can have it set to fixed size. Um, it might actually be a good idea to make this one dynamically allocated since the reason you're probably watching this is because your virtual hard drive ran out of space. So you might want to make it something that's a little bit easier to expand, but I'm just going to make mine fixed size again so that I can get that slightly better performance. And then we would just want to set up how big we want it to be. So I'm actually going to make this one, um, why don't we do 46 gigs? And you want it to be a little bit larger than the disk that you currently have your virtual machine set to because later on we're basically gonna be transferring it from one disk to the other. Uh, so if you have it, like the previous one I had was 30 gigs, so I'm setting this one to around 46. And then give it a name that's gonna make it easy to identify what it is. So I'm gonna call this Gen2 Big Boy and go ahead and create it. Oh, what's this error about? Oh yeah, that's the same name that I did during testing. So we'll just make it uh, big boy, but not all caps. So there we go. And then choose the disk that you just created. And then you'll see that it now appears here under your uh, SATA controller as a second drive. So the next thing that we're gonna want to do is boot from a live CD. And this can be any live CD. Uh, doesn't even have to be the same one that you use to set it up. 
because we're just going to enter into that live environment to move the data from the original virtual drive to the new larger one that we created. Uh, so I'm going to just use this Linux Mint live CD. That way we have a GUI and everything looks a little bit better. So I'm gonna hit okay for that. And uh, also, of course, you want to make sure in your system settings that you have the optical disk set to be prioritized before the hard disk in your boot order. That way you actually boot into the live CD and not the virtual hard disk that you already have created. So we'll hit start. And then we'll start Linux Mint. Okay, so now we are in our Linux Mint Live environment, and I'm going to open up Gparted just so that we can get a more visual look at our disk here. So you can see that this is dev SDA, which is the main disk that everything is currently installed to. And then over here, we have the second disk, dev SDB, which is just a big chunk of unallocated space. Nothing is currently on there. So you can see everything here and you don't actually have to open up Gparted uh, really to do any of this. Of course, you can do it from the command line. I'm just gonna use it to be a little bit more visual for this video here. Uh, so the command to actually move the data from this partition to the other partition is we're going to use DD. So go ahead and open up a terminal. And the command that we're going to use is sudo dd if equals dev sda of equals dev sdb. So what this syntax here means is that we're feeding the input file, so that's the if of dev sda where all of our data currently is to the output file of of dev sdb to the dd command so make sure that you double check the syntax here make sure that the drives are correct and that the syntax is correct before running this command because otherwise you're probably going to end up with some corrupting data so i'm going to press enter to run this and I'm gonna pause the video because it's probably gonna take a little bit of time for this move to complete. So now that our data has moved, we can come over to Gparted and refresh the devices. And if we look at dev sdb, we'll see that now everything has been moved over to that new partition. Now, if you have a partition scheme that matches mine, or doesn't necessarily match mine exactly, but at least has your root partition, your root file system as the final partition of the drive, then it's going to be fairly easy to add this unallocated space, which is just the difference between the dev SDA and the dev SDB. All you really have to do is right click on this SDB4 and click on resize move, and then you can just expand it. So this is going to eat up the rest of that unallocated space. Uh, if you don't have your partitioning scheme like this, like some people might have their root file system come before the swap. And if that's the case, then the swap is going to block you from actually being able to expand your root file system. And if that's the case, then you're going to have to delete the swap and you're going to have to then resize the partition and then recreate the swap once you, uh, well, you could either recreate the swap from here or you could create it from inside of the virtual machine once you boot to it from the new disk. 
Um, so, good thing to keep in mind whenever you're partitioning your drive, it's always going to be a good idea to have the root file system last just so that you can do this easier. Same thing applies if you had to move this from one physical hard drive to another physical hard drive. So then you want to go ahead and click on this checkbox to apply the operations and then click apply. And we can just ignore this message here. So you can see the operation, it's essentially growing it. And then once Gparted completes the operation, we can then reboot or shut down the uh, live CD rather. And then if we go back into our settings under storage, we can delete this old drive here. And so now we just have the big boy. And then of course, make the hard disk be the first boot priority. And I just have to enable EFI for my particular system. If you don't need EFI for yours, then don't worry about that. Then hit OK. And then go ahead and start it up. And let's get a graphical environment going. And so now if I do a DF, you can see that now I've got that much more space. Uh, I can also open PC Man FM for you to see um, that the total space we have here now is 41.3 gigs and we got 19.4 gigs of free space. So that's how you can expand a fixed hard drive or really any type of drive in VirtualBox, how you can expand it and add more space. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to share it with people that need to expand their virtual hard disk space. Give it a like, subscribe, and tick the notification bell so that you know when new videos are being released. Peace out.